Hi everyone, we have another private pilot lesson for you. We'll be going over how to use the G1000 specifically for navigation. Without any further ado, let's just get right into it. So we are today going over some navigation things. Um, so we've already discussed in previous lessons uh, pilotage and dead reckoning. So obviously VFR flying, uh, we can use waypoints and different uh, geographical features and stuff that we're looking for to fly around uh, and then per the conditions of the day that we do our nav logs on um, and the winds for the day we can do all of our dead reckoning all the calculations to figure out how long each of the legs from point to point along a route should take to uh, to get to our destination wherever we're going but along the way uh, there's other things that we can do outside of that uh, to navigate. Uh, a couple of them are via uh, ground-based navigation, so like VORs and Vortex, things like that, um, that we can tune into. And then we also have GPS, so we're going to kind of learn a little bit of that today and mess with those things. Uh, so we'll kind of start off with VORs. Uh, so here close to us at DFW, you've got Maverick. Uh, that identifier is Tango, Tango, Tango. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, while we're doing this, we can turn on autopilot. So anytime you're doing that, you want to make sure that you've got it all set up uh, before you're hitting AP. So you want this left box to read what you want it to read. So we're just going to keep it with a heading mode of 090. And then on an altitude, we're just going to roll with uh, 2000 for now. And as you get it to capture that 2000, if you are below, then you'll go flight level change in nose up to whatever speed you want to climb with and obviously power. If you're high, then we'll go vertical speed here and then nose down for to get a negative number with that arrow pointing down and he's got it at 100 feet per minute because we were already close to 2000, uh, but vertical speed down for descending. Okay. And then after you've got those two boxes, the left and right, squared away, then you hit AP. As he's already got done there, good job. Okay, all right, so let's tune in the Maverick VOR and uh, see what radio we're on and see how we can fly that. So yeah, FMS knob, we'll go over to nearest and then we'll go down to the nearest VOR. There you go. And then to put input that, you've got to highlight the frequency. There you go. And enter. And then go nav one active. And then we'll see it populate over there. It'll go TTT right there. And then as soon as it uh, we switch over that CDI. Go clear that screen. To nav one, it'll go green. That means it's confirmed and identified it. Then we can twist that triangle shaped uh, knob. Uh, think of it like a V or VOR, tune in that VOR. As you twist that around with those two arrows opposite of each other, that'll be a from indication. That'll tell you the radial that you're currently on. Okay. And if you wanted a to indication, as in you wanted to fly towards the uh, the VOR, you could just push that knob in, and it'll give both of those arrows stacked together, and then you could head that way, and that would point you towards the VOR. Okay. Another thing you can do is PFD options down there towards the bottom left third, and then bearing one. And per you already having uh, uh, Maverick tuned in there, that'll show you your DME distance via GPS from that uh, that navigation aid. So from Maverick, you're currently 25.9 nautical miles. Okay. And if you had something in Nav 2 up here, you could also use bearing two and select to nav to, and if you had something in there that we were currently using, it would give you your DME distance there as well, okay? Um, a couple other things you can do with this. So flying uh, using VORs, basically you could, if you wanted to uh, fly to it, 
So it's always going to chase this outer bigger arrow as far as your navigation, okay? So if your CDI is on your green data and you start trying to use navigation, it's going to fly uh, based off of what you've, you've got it tuned into right there. So if we hit nav right now, it's going to try to flip around and recapture the radio going towards Maverick, okay? But say that we wanted to fly this radio that we're currently on outbound from Maverick. Okay, so we're on the 068. All we've got to do, because we're on heading mode now, we're track, we're flying a 090 heading, but we want to fly that 068 radio. It's just hit nav. Go ahead. I hit it again. I think it double bumped, maybe. There you go. And it's triggered VOR. And now it's turning us to the left because we're already on that radio, but it wants to keep us on that radio, so it's going to fly us that direction and chase that towards the uh, outer big arrow. Okay? Any questions there? Yeah. Sounds Simple, good. huh? Yep. Cool. All right, now we can kind of switch over and do some GPS work. A um, couple different ways that you can use uh, GPS as far as the G G1000 goes. You can actually use it in a bunch of ways, but uh, kind of the most popular couple uh, for especially getting around to uh, airports nearby is going with the nearest button. Back out of that, there you go. So nearest, you can scroll down and if you find something uh, that's near to you, you can just go select it. So let's go, say we're going to Caddo, the 7 Foxtrot 3, then you can hit direct enter, enter. And then it's going to give you a, uh, a calculated line from where you just told it to go direct enter, enter, and point you a straight line to Caddo. Okay? So that's a way you can do it. Um, you can also push the range knob in. Say we didn't actually want to go to Caddo. We want to go over here to uh, Taro. So yeah, I, all I did was push the range knob in, and then you can kind of move this button side to side for a cursor to move around on the MFD. So I've got my cursor there. I'm going and hovering over Taro. So after it's hovered over and it's got a little bubble around it, you can hit direct, enter, enter, and it'll give you a new direct line straight to Taro. Okay? Sounds good. So when you're doing that way, also a good little handy tip is once you've got it uh, selected on there, um, you can go and check out whatever information you need to about the, uh, about the airport on that waypoint page for airport information. Scroll down, got your ASOS there, any weather information, Unicoms, or anything for whatever uh, whatever information for that, uh, that airport there. For those frequencies, tells you what runways they have uh, and their distances, width, things like that. Field elevation. Okay. All good with that? Yes, sir. And then also, even if you didn't have, even if you weren't going direct enter, enter this range knob is still super handy. Um, you could just go over and uh, highlight like rock wall there, and then just hit enter. Okay, and it'll still go pull up a quick information uh, menu for you, so you can throw in frequencies really quick if you wanted to do it that way too, for whatever reason. I say if you're not actually flying to Rockwall, but we just wanted to communicate with uh, Rockwall's frequency that we're passing through the area, um, you could just do that, hover over it, hit enter, and uh, pull up this page so that you could tune in there Unicom and communicate that you're passing through the area, but you wanted to continue on your uh, direct enter, enter line that you had to whatever airport that you were headed to. Okay. Sounds good. Any questions about any of that? No. All right. Good stuff. We'll practice that a couple more times, give you a few more reps, make sure that you're good there. All right. I hope you guys found this lesson helpful. We really were just scratching the surface on what the G1000 can do. Uh, we spent a lot of time focusing on this because that's what all of our Piper archers have here at Thrustglide. Uh, but if you guys are looking for more information, be sure to subscribe because we post weekly on this channel. And um, if you did like this video, like and comment. Thank you and see you again next week.